Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by My Physio. That's M I Physio. If you've been sitting around too much during quarantine, haven't been doing your stretches, then you might have some issues with your body. Ooh, my neck. Ah, uh, my, my hands. Back. Well, My Physio is here to help. They have three locations in Auckland, New Zealand, in Te Aratu, Manukau, and Odahu, or you can get in touch with them at myphysio.co.nz. They have a fantastic team over there and provide services such as sports rehab, injury prevention care, and even acupuncture. So get in touch with the team and let my physio be your physio. Pula vinaka. Mula, folks, today's guest is another trailblazer, the first of his kind, the only Fijian of Indian descent and Rotuman to have ever played for the All Blacks Sevens team when he made his debut in 2013 at the Wellington Sevens. Not only has he got a ton of trophies on the field, he's a top guy off it as well. He's the player development manager at Ponsonby Rugby Club in Auckland, New Zealand, where he's grown up. That's the club that's produced the most All Blacks in history. He's also got a degree from the Auckland University of Technology in Sports and Recreational Studies. I had a terrific time speaking to this young man with a terrific head on his shoulders and I can't wait to see what else he does in his career. Ladies and gentlemen, today's guest is Rocky Khan. Bula Rocky, how you doing? Hey, Bula. Good, thank you. <laughs> good, to, good, to, good to be here and thanks for um, inviting me. <laughs> oh, mate. Thanks so much for coming on. I'm super excited to have you on. I followed your career actually ages mm. ago when you first come, come, came on the scene. I think I tweeted about you. Uh, excited, <laughs> so excited to see like an Indian rugby player on yeah. the scene, um, which was crazy. And I was like, so I never knew you back then, obviously, but you know, I was just so proud. Um, it's, yeah. a fun, it's a good feeling, you know. Uh, thank you for that. I think um, I reckon um, when I was growing up, hey, I always, that was one thing I always wanted to do was try and wear that black jersey. Oh. And, you know, growing up in New Zealand, you know, there's not many, or there wasn't many Indian rugby players or half Indian um, that actually, you know, went up to the highest level. So I thought, man, if I could do that, you know, then hopefully I can spark up a chain for other, you know, Indians to try and do that, um, whether it be Fijian Indians or, or even just Indians from India. <laughs> oh, 100%, uh, man. 100%. So, and yeah, really, uh, just dream big, eh? Yeah. Oh, man, that reminds me, like, that's exactly what one of my earlier guests said, uh, this guy, Bobby Singh, uh, I was talking about earlier. He's um, the only football player in history to win the NFL, the Canadian League, and the XFL. Uh, you know, I asked what? him, uh, he said, dream big. And one of the questions I asked him, which applies to you as well, uh, coincidentally, is like, I'm fascinated by you being such a trailblazer, right? You know, I wanted yeah. to get get a sense of what it's like playing a sport where there's no one that looks like you or with the same background, you know, let alone go to the highest levels of the sport. Um, you know, in my mind, there'd be self doubt, you know, there might be some pressure to go down a different route, you know, like coming from the Indian families, you know, always like pressure to go another, another, another path. Education. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent, which is a great yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and something you're doing now, but, um, did you ever feel like an outsider? Um, yeah, I guess growing up, um, cause I wasn't the same as everyone else in the groups or in the rugby groups I was in there. I was, I just, um, I, it was, it was a blessing in a way cause I was able to flow in between different groups and just get along with everyone. Um, but yeah, I did feel, uh, you know, that I didn't relate at times. So, you know, just because of, you know, how, just uh, the, cult, uh, the culture or, you know, the nationality and, and whatnot. And, um, but it didn't really throw me off pursuing my goals and my dreams. And I guess that's the best thing about sports um, is it doesn't really matter who you are. <laughs> you can, yeah. it's, it's, it's a great equalizer. So you can, you know, you can play with, uh, you can play with people with different social economic backgrounds, you know, different nationalities and, you know, what thing that brings you all together is just running on the rugby field and playing with rugby ball and you, you build some great relationships and great friendships along the way. So that's, um, that's, that's, yeah, that's it for me. Hey, I, I, I didn't really feel too much, um, like too awkward at times, but you know, 
that's just me in a way. Sometimes I just I just get along with everyone. <laughs> that's a great message, you know. Let your hands and feet and all that do the talking. You know, play the sport, love the sport, yeah. um, and then that will create that energy and like draw people yeah. in. Um, and, and rugby's awesome. Like I grew up playing soccer and I loved it. And but but the rugby community, especially in New Zealand, mm. like seems very supportive and yeah. you know, like like a band of brothers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think um. Just touching on, on, on the other stuff as well is I remember my dad, he used to always tell me, um, he goes, you, you come into this world with nothing and you leave this world with nothing. <laughs> you know, he goes, just, just be nice to people. So I really think about, you know, it doesn't really matter who you are, where you're from or what you come from. And he's just, everyone's still the same, eh? <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> We're still humans at the end of the day. So just trying to be nice to people and get along with people because <laughs> we all go to the same place. <laughs> oh, exactly. Especially at a time like this, right? That's a yeah, exactly. message, you know, you know, yeah. and that's something that's timeless. You can always do, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And so interesting. Um, you talked about your dad, and um, yeah. we touched on, you know, you've got a connection to Fiji, being Indian, but yeah. also Rotuma, uh, which mm. is an interesting place in itself. You know, what what are your memories of uh, growing up with the uh, with that heritage or visiting um, Rotuma and stuff like that? Yeah, so my um my story is my parents they left Fiji in 1987 or after 1987 coup. Gotcha. So they were both working for the Fiji Times. Um, right. So dad was head of advertising for Fiji Times, and mum was um mum was his, his secretary. Ah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's how they met. Nice one. And then um and then the coup happened in 1987. And they thought, oh, you know, it's it's probably best for them and safer for them to to leave and start fresh and you know seek better opportunities for them. So mm-hmm. they came to New Zealand. Um, and then I was born in 1989 mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, just growing up, uh, growing up in New Zealand and oh, yeah. you know, they ended up, um, opening up a dairy shop, um, just a few hundred meters down the road from Eden Park. Awesome. <laughs> Not a bad yeah, thing. And, and I remember when, um, when, when, uh, Eden Park used to be full of all the rugby players uh, you know, supporters when, when yeah. Auckland was doing really well back then, yeah. um, just growing up at the shop, um, some of the because my parents were working sometimes they'll come the supporters will come or uh, the, the customers they'll pick me up and they'll go to, <laughs> i'll go to the game with them and they'll come back and drop me off and then go home <laughs> oh man ah, the glory days eh? i remember yeah. when auckland the blues the first two seasons of uh super rugby yeah uh, i love those times you know and you would have grown up during those times eh? Yeah, exactly, man. I was, uh, yeah, that's what I always remember about Auckland growing up. You know, just, they used to just win everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> and um, and I think just coming back to the um, like growing up with the nationality and the backgrounds. I know my my parents are always proud. Eh, they're always proud to be you know, uh, Indian, and my mom is proud to be Rotuman. And mm-hmm. um, we don't really get to mix around too much with the community because we're you know working seven days a week. Oh yeah, they're always proud. Eh, and um. And uh, just uh, my dad was always he was always encouraging me and, and mum to, to the, do the best that I can in my sport and and in my um, in my studies as well. Um, and I think the the belief and just the belief they had in me, but yeah. also seeing the work ethic that they had. Yeah. You know, they would they would work like seven days a week, oh, yeah. um, six o'clock in the morning to nine ten o'clock at night every day at the shop and that kind of installed that drive and that work ethic in me to, to try and um, that you can achieve anything. You know, yeah. I think a lot of uh, people from the islands when they leave and they seek out mm. better opportunities for their family, mm. um, they make a lot of sacrifices and mm. they put in a lot of work to try and see their, you know, their kids and their, their family do better. Mm. And that's something I really take away from, from my family is that, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> oh man, that's yeah. beautiful. Eh? That's amazing that you can you have that awareness and gratitude. Mm. You know. So yeah, I'm really thank- thankful for that. My dad's passed now. He passed away two two years ago. I'm sorry. Uh, two and a half years ago. Oh, that's all right. Um, but yeah, I really take a lot of the the learnings and teachings that he gave me um, mm. on board, and like even just when times get tough and stuff as well. Just uh, mm. you know, you can always just keep working and keep pushing through it. Mm. Sounds like he was a real mentor to you. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's all right. He's all right. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, those foundations so important, eh? And um, sounds like you know they gave you some timeless principles, you know, values to mm. live with. And um, 
you know, on that subject of um, mentorship, like, you know, parents are so important. Did you have any other mentors growing up or still have some mentors? Yeah, I think um, I've been very well fortunate to have really good coaches in my time mm-hmm. um, in, in the rugby scene. Um, uh, I remember my under-15 coach at, at Mount Albert Grammar School, the school that I went to, he mm-hmm. was uh, real big on, on work and hard work and work ethic and mm-hmm. he really pushed us mentally and that kind of pushed, you know, pushed us to... to uh-huh. um, to, to get better and then when I was 15 I jumped I got selected to train off the Auckland men's sevens team mm. and that was pretty cool was, you know 15 nice. year old playing and training with all these guys and the coach of the team was Eric Rush so he's oh, a legend he is a legend mm. the legend of sevens and um, he would take us on board and I remember um, just real simple stuff that you know mm. just hard work have fun belong <laughs> pretty much eh? yeah, yeah. and just a sense of community and that's something I really took on board and everything that I do, whether it be coaching and stuff as well. Um, and a lot of those, the guys from the era that Eric Rush was coaching, our Auckland team, have gone on to do great things all across the world. You know, DJ Forbes, mm. um, he was part of the group before we made the All Black Sevens team, you know, and we know what he's done with his career. Um, um, there's a couple of guys that have gone on to play for professional rugby in France and play for their Pacific nations, whether it be Fiji or Samoa or Tonga. Um, there's even a couple of boys who have gone to play sevens for America uh, and they're doing some great stuff over there as well. And um, some guys are all around the country that is doing awesome stuff in the rugby community and guys are doing well in, you know, in business and in, in life as well. So it's, um, he, he was awesome. Um, there's a guy, um, Wayne Pivak. Used to coach the oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember. He, yeah, he was one of my coaches, and just the way he um, he managed people. He was a real good people manager, and just um, just able to to get the best out of people. Eh? And yeah. he's something I took on board with him. Um, Waisaki Satutu was one of my coaches, and he was an awesome mentor. Um, and just to see the environment that he's created. Um, his wife is at a school called Howard College that's here. Oh, yeah. A real small school. Mm-hmm. And I remember they were starting up the sevens team at the school. And um, Saki asked me, oh, you know, my wife's starting up a, a sevens team at the school. Um, do you want to go and coach? I was like, oh, yeah, I'll go and coach. I never heard of Howard College before oh, yeah. until I went there. Smaller I was driving. It took me 30, 40 minutes to try and get there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we started up their sevens program, and nice. um, in the first year we started up, we came second. Um, our girls, uh, the girls, really took off there. We came second at the, uh, I think the nationals, and then at the under fifteen nationals. The second year we came, we won the under fifteen nationals, and then the fifth year of that program, they won the whole New Zealand uh, Condors nationals. And that's from a school that you know people didn't really know about, and just um, even that experience as well. I was like, Jax, you know, um, you can take a group of anyone, you know, and if you get the right people and right support around them, they can achieve anything. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and they're just down the road from a school called St Kent's College that's well known oh. here in New Zealand for you know putting out scholarships and and whatnot as well. I was like, Jax, you know. It, it really doesn't matter who the person is, you know, if you can have a great a- attitude and, and see the best in them and really put the time and efforts in them, they can achieve some pretty pretty awesome things. Have you always had one eye on like community and coaching and uh, development, player development? Because it seems like you were exposed to some really incredible people. Uh, you know, I say people because they're all round, you know, not just mm. in sport, but in life as well, in business, all, all of that. Um, mm. So it feels like you uh, had some very early inspiration. Um, you know, is that what drew you to do uh, a lot of your community work right now, your player development stuff? Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that and um, especially Rugby on the Rocks, which you've just started. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've always, uh, I guess I've always loved people and I've always loved seeing people do their best. And, I've got a, like a mission statement for myself. It's to positively impact the world so, oh, yeah. and everything that I do. So whether it be catching up with catching up with people, or you know, just running a coaching session, or just um, you know, whether it be catching people online or, or whatnot, like just anything. Um, and I think that reflects in everything that I do. Um, yeah. I was quite lucky with the coaching side of things. 
Mm. I got into it quite early. My first year out of high school, I coached the uh, Man Albert Grammar School Sevens team. Nice, that's and, real uh, early. Yeah, and mm. um, and then we we ended up winning that uh, New Zealand Condors National Sevens title that year. Nice. Um, we beat Wesley College in the final, and Wesley College had um had a good team that Malakai Fikitua, mm. Charles Beatau, a guy named. <sighs> Um, Glenn Fisiahi, who played for Not bad. Warriors. Um, Not a bad lineup. And uh, Danny Tusitalo, who plays for mm. the Auckland Mighty Team Cup team now. Mm. Uh, we had a good team as well. It's Stephen Law too, and Matthew McGahn, who gone on to, to do some quite quite good things. But yeah, just being exposed to that quite early and seeing people thrive and get better mm. is something that I was really, I enjoyed doing. Mm. And then I um, and then I was playing the, and because I was into sport a lot, so I went and studied a Bachelor in Sport and Rec degree and chipped away at those papers and while I was playing as well I kept building my kind of I guess my career on the side mm -hmm. you know this is kind of stuff that I enjoy doing whether it be coaching just catching up with them and, and helping people out and as I was playing I was doing all this coaching and the, and the teams kept doing quite well for themselves they're winning different competitions and players yeah. were going up to different higher levels um, and and then I um and then I, um, you know, made the sevens team for New Zealand, and then I, um, awesome. and then when I was sort of transitioning out a little bit as well. What was that uh, like making the making the team? What was um, uh, was the best parts about it? What was the most challenging part about that? Just um, just the uh, the journey to try and make it. Oh yeah, was real. It took me seven years to try and make the team. <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah, like I started training for the Auckland team. Mm. When I was 15, and I think whenever when I first started training for them, that sparked up the the desire to play for the All Black Sevens team. I see. And I had to make the I had to make the Auckland Sevens team first before they make the New Zealand team. <laughs> so I had to. So it took me three years to make that that New Zealand uh, that Auckland team. Mm. And then after I made the Auckland team, we go down to na National Sevens. And at the end of the at the end of the Sevens tournament back then, they'll name a squad of players to go to New Zealand Sevens camp. Mm. And then I remember that first time I went, they read up the list of players, and um, my name didn't get read out. But uh, you know, I was, I was, I was alright with that because I only yep. played a few minutes. I was off the bench that year, yep. so I was like, I'll work hard and train and get better and come back the next year. So I did that, came back the next year. They read out the list, and my name didn't get read out again. I was like, oh no, it's all good. Uh, yeah. I'll um, go back up. and work hard and try and get better and come back the next year. So I did that, came back the next year. They read out the list, and um. My name get, didn't get read out again. <laughs> so, I was like, oh, no, nah, yeah, it's all right. And it happened a few times. And then I ended up, you know, coming back again one year. And in 2013, they ended up mm. reading my name out on the list. And that's when mm. I made my debut at the Wellington Sevens. And that oh, was yeah. a that was a dream come true. Um, and just to see the pride and, and joy in my parents' face as well. And, you know, becoming the first you know, Indian. I bet. Um, and the first Rotuman. Something that, you know. <laughs> That they were really proud of and i was stoked to to see that to see that in them oh yeah yeah oh they weren't the only ones i remember that time like just seeing you on tv you know it's like mm. a special thing just seeing someone that's got a shared background uh yeah it's, it's a special thing and uh, yeah i can bet your parents would be stoked um and, yeah uh, there's such a great message man like the journey you know mm. getting uh picking yourself up after all those uh yeah i think it's a great lesson for life eh? because like in life, you know, not, not, not everything's going to go uh, go to plan. You know, sometimes we go for ups and downs. So we just got to pick ourselves back up and we yeah. just keep moving and keep moving forward. Hundred uh, percent. And and um, when it's sort of, I guess, coming back, um, just uh, when I was doing all that sevens, mm -hmm. the plan wise, I was building that that career outside of it as well. And when it comes to the rugby and the rock stuff, I uh, I was. You know, I'm quite passionate about what I do, so I was like, "Shucks, I might just um." And this lockdown happened, and I was like, <laughs> trying to think. And I made a real <laughs> decision, nice and early, to be real positive about it and have yes. a positive outlook and try and find ways and take positive action. And then one day, I thought, no, "I'll just start this rugby on the rocks thing up." <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I um, started up this business, and it's pretty much everything that I've been doing for the last ten plus years. And I just actually branded it and put it into rugby on the rocks and. Um, you know, it's just positive impact in the world and everything that I do. And 
just the people and the conversations that I had since then, it's been pretty awesome. I had a, a Zoom meeting with a group from India that play at rugby players in India. And I'm real passionate about seeing Indian rugby thrive because there's, oh, yeah. there's one billion Indians around. <laughs> <laughs> there two and the rugby there must be some good and seven. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, and uh, just other people as well. And even um, I listened to a podcast last, uh, last week mm. and I had um, – Wayne Smith was talking on it, and they had my um, my old sports psych um, from the All Black Sevens team because he's still involved with them now, um, and they were all speaking and, and whatnot. And and um, I ended up um, giving the sports psych a message to saying, "Oh, well, you know, awesome, awesome interview, awesome podcast." And he goes, "Oh, what are you doing? We'll catch up. We'll catch up again soon." So I ended up catching up with him a couple of days ago and having a Zoom meeting with him. And just yeah. having an awesome yarn with me, and I kept asking about Wayne Smith, and he goes, "Oh, okay, Wayne Smith, he always talks about sharing. You know, he just shares everything. If he shares one thing, he'll get four or five things different, you know, back." Yeah. And I go, "Does it, you know? Does he? Does he just keep sharing everything?" And he goes, "Yeah, he just shares everything, <laughs> and he keeps coming back. He's even talking to the opposition and sharing." <laughs> I was like, oh, "That's that's cool." So when I um after that conversation, mm. I was like, "Should I might just just keep sharing anything?" So yeah. Um, on the Rugby on the Rocks page, I share a lot of the uh, information that I use in my own coaching that I've done over the last 10 years, like real basic, simple principles or, yeah. or techniques. And I just share it to, for yeah. anyone to, to listen to. Um, and that's something I really picked up from that conversation. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'll just keep sharing. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that message. You know, I uh, there's, a, there's so many interesting things you just said I want to pick up on, uh, you yeah. know, their first – you like we were talking about this earlier getting something out of your head and into your hands yes. you know yes. and like you're starting rugby on the rocks um yeah. once you put that out there uh you know same yeah. as the wayne smith misses share put things out there and you'll get so much yeah. back in return um yeah so uh yeah, yeah there was yeah, a really yeah, like, good message you were telling me earlier uh, about visualizing and getting something out of your head yeah 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 i yeah. think um like, if you can see it in your mind you can hold it in your hand mm-hmm you know, like, like you said, with your, your, we're talking earlier about your podcast, how you've been yeah. thinking about it, thinking yeah. about it, and then you end up, you know, taking the first step, and then, you you know, you're actually holding holding it in your hand at the moment. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I'm well, talking to you. I saw you on TV a few years ago. I, I'm, like, int- yeah. loving this chat right now. Um, it's, and uh, even um, another example is, um, so I, my, my job is, so I've got the rugby on the rocks that I'm doing as well, and I'm building up my actual job. I'm the rugby development officer for the Ponsonby Rugby Club. Oh, so yeah. that's the real um, prestigious and yeah a, a club to be a part of. We've got mm-hmm. the most All Blacks in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. We've got forty-seven All Blacks. Um, we've got the most championships in the in um, in the Auckland competition. We won our fiftieth last year. Mm. The next club, next club, closest club is uh, University with seventeen. Mm. Um, we had three All Blacks play for us last year. Rico Iwane, yep. Patrick Tupulotu, and Sonny Bill Williams played for us. Oh, not bad, eh? Um, yeah, that was awesome. And um, I think um, I'm about about maybe 18, 18 months into my role at the moment. And when I first started in the job, um, I, I played the final for our team and we won the championship. And then on the Monday, right. I came and I um, – so, sorry, on the Friday, I got the job. On the Saturday – I played our final and won, and then on the Monday I came into work and I grabbed the, uh, I ended up grabbing the the keys to the company car, and the the guy who had the role, he was leaving to back to England that yeah. night, yeah. And then on the Tuesday I flew off to Fiji and did a speaking <laughs> engagement of um Wasali Sriri at the University of South Pacific. Nice. And then I came back to New Zealand on that Tuesday, or the next, the following Tuesday. And then, I, and then, because I, I had the car keys, and, and I drove into work. Now, and I sat in some, I sat in my office. Yep. And I remember sitting sitting on my desk, and I'm thinking, what do I do now? Because <laughs> <laughs> there was no real handover. And then I um, then I just got a piece uh, of paper out. Yeah. I just sort of just ripped down <laughs> anything. So I'll just write down anything that was in my head. Yeah. And I remember writing down um, like different goals and whatnot. And I wrote down a goal as one of win 
you know, five championships. I put it real out there. So it was our, our yes. premier men's, our premier women's, our under 85s, our, mm. our um, prem development team and our under 20s team. I was like, shucks, I was trying to win five championships. And then after I wrote that down, then I had to try and think, how can I make it happen? So I put, wrote down all these different, um, you know, ways to try and make it happen or make it yeah. achieve. Yeah. And then after I did that, I just went out to work and try to make it happen or trying to, you know, and then I, um, and then fast forward the end of the next season, um, we had six teams in the championship semifinal. <laughs> we had three, three finalists and we had two champions for our 15 side. And, and when it came to the seventh season, our under 20s team won and our women's team won the sevens competition, but that was kind of coming back to the, if yeah. you can see it in line, you can hold it in your hand. Yeah. From that moment that you wrote those things down. Yeah. Started and just fixing. The, yeah. And then I would just, but uh, you know, faith without deeds is dead. So you got to put the actions into it as well. Oh yeah. Um, so I, you know, I had that I visualized or sort of my mind, I put it down on paper, then I went into put it into action to try and see it happen. Even though we didn't win the five championships, we still had a great, you know, representation of teams yeah, yeah. pushing to, uh, you know, to the top, and that was cool. But I guess the the beauty about it is what we actually created along the way, the community oh, that yeah. we created, the people that we helped develop and grow, and we helped push push higher. Uh -huh. A lot of guys, a lot of guys, and a lot of girls pushed higher to to Auckland Motor Team Cup and Auckland Storm, and you know, they you know different rep teams and whatnot. So that was pretty awesome. Um, I guess the challenge now is to see how what we how we can do it better <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah that's the thing knowing your mi mindset you know as soon as that uh season's over i bet you wrote down some new goals and then you push on and you start again yeah exactly mm -hmm. and i think possibly for for me now you know in this lockdown this lockdown period and rugby and yeah everyone's taking a hit from it <laughs> yeah yeah for sure so it's like what 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 are the priorities and what what can what can we do to help Mm -hmm. help society you know and mm -hmm. what role does rugby play in it because you know I'm, I'm in the industry now you know it might not necessarily be about winning or trying to push teams it might just be getting um trying to get as many people playing the game again yeah. and enjoying it and seeing what role it does in helping people back to you know back to feeling normal again yeah 100 percent. what's the bigger picture here eh? yeah exactly and that, that all lines to to my mission statement, it's a positive impact the world. Yeah. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one thing you keep saying, uh, and one of your mantras, um, is keep moving. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Where did that come from? Um, when we were, when we were in lockdown, mm -hmm. um, moving into lockdown, it was kind of a, you know, because we went training, our teams went training. And I just really wanted to encourage everyone to keep moving and mm -hmm. to stay active. And that, you know, that plays a part in our mental well-being. Um, but also just physically, you know, just to try and keep fit for, for training. Mm. And, um, and I really wanted to try and, you know, practice what I preach as well. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. So I really, I, thought I took it on myself to actually just keep moving and training it and keep posting it up and just hashtag keep moving. Um, it catch, it's uh, catching on, uh, looks like, eh? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. We've got guys from all, all around the world that's um, uh -huh. guys from around New Zealand and like, Singapore and London and I've been getting messages from everyone. Um, awesome. But that's, that's, a, that's an awesome, um, I guess, metaphor for life, I guess. You know, it's not just about keep moving and, you know, physical, um, mm -hmm. but also just, you know, just for our bodies, but also just moving in life. You know, we can't stand still, but always move forward and try and get better. Um, and I guess roll with the punches along the way because because <laughs> they're gonna come. So <laughs> yeah, I I love I love your Instagram and you know for those of you listening, you should definitely follow Rocky Khan on Instagram and also at Rugby on the Rocks. Yes, uh, on Instagram, some great content being put up and uh, more every day. All that, like I love I love all your content. And I've actually got a couple of questions about your Instagram uh, yes. and so, some of the things we've talked about. Um, you touched a little bit on um, studies, and yes. I uh, I saw from some of your posts and even uh, seeing you now, 
uh, on the screen you got a lot of books in your room <laughs> yeah what, what what do you like reading what kind of stuff do you like reading i love reading like non-fiction and and um just getting into the minds of of different people and see how they um how they think and see what yeah. and you know you might be able to catch or pick up some things that you can add to your life and and even your career and your job as well i remember and mm-hmm. we went to kenya and we we're playing a tournament there and i went into a bookshop and i started looking at some books and, oh, yeah. and um you know getting some books and an old Ken- kenyan man started talking to me and he goes you know it's really good that you're getting some books and he goes when you when you um when you read the book you start to reason off the author and he started to take up you know take up those ideas and and thoughts and and whatnot and i was like oh that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah totally yeah well, what kind of stuff are you reading right now um one of my mentors uh gave me a book uh mm. think and grow rich by napoleon hill oh yeah uh, a classic yeah so yeah it's a classic uh actually that book helped me make the new zealand sevens team the first time no way yeah that book helped me make it yeah I remember reading the end of 2012 mm. and um I put a lot of the steps in, in place and nice. you know, and then in January 2013, I ended up um, wearing the black jersey. I, yeah, I saw it in my mind and I held it in my hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so that was from that book? Yeah, that's, that, that, that book helped me, um, helped me uh, a lot of the principles in that helped me actually achieve or yeah. uh, achieve that goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. A, lot, a lot of timeless advice in that book, eh? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Might, might read it a couple more times before lockdown finishes. <laughs> oh yeah, nice, nice. Um, there's a, a couple of books I've been reading right now, and yes. I kind of tied in with like your "keep moving" uh, yes. mantra. Um, because I'm in the states here, and I've been uh, reading a lot of like uh, Navy SEALs inspired oh, yeah. work. Uh, there's one called "Can't Hurt Me" by David Goggins. I don't know if you oh, know this guy, David. yeah. yeah. It's, it's a good one. If you listen to the audio book, it's really good because he narrates some of it. Uh, yeah. It's an awesome story about um, going through like all these tough times and keeping on moving. And, yeah. uh, and you know, he's uh, been labeled like the hardest man on earth. Uh, yeah. But he said he, he, he has to keep moving every day. Like he's has, there's no finish line for him, you know, he's wow. like, keep moving, keep moving. Um, so I thought of that book when I, um, uh, it was uh, looking at, at all your material, all your content. Uh, definitely would recommend that. If uh, I, it looks like you've got a whole list of books to get through already. Oh, thanks, uh, no, no, I've, I've I've seen a few video clips of him, but I haven't read his yeah. books. Yeah, I love his yeah. video. Um, I'll definitely have to download that book. <laughs> yeah, it's a definitely um, that one, and then there's one called Extreme Ownership uh, by oh, nice. Jocko Willink. Um, a lot of really good timeless principles from. Um, the navy seals uh you know i mean they're like a very high those are the guys you want to learn off <laughs> yeah yeah it can, sometimes it can get a little intense um yeah uh, you know i don't blame them you know because they've done all sorts of crazy stuff you know so but a lot of stuff that you can uh, apply to st- uh, life like the david goggins things keep there was a lot of like keep on moving keep on moving mm. stuff which um sounds like uh you know it's helping you out uh, a lot as well or throughout your career um mm. Not just on the physical side, but like on the mental side as well. Um, and, and that's another thing um, I wanted to uh, touch on is uh, the mental health aspects of, you know, um, sports and the career and like transitioning um, mm. into, into the limelight, um, out of sport. Um, mm. you know, what kind of challenges have you faced on that front? Um. Just I've, I've had my battles with um, depression, eh? Um, mm. I think earlier at the end of 2013, you know, I, um, I missed out on, you know, I didn't get contracted again and I went through that tough phase. Mm. And, you know, but sometimes you don't really think about it or you don't really know you're going through it. Yeah. And it wasn't, it's not until you open up and you start speaking to people around you and you start seeking some help that you can actually, you know, that you know it's not actually too bad and you can actually get through it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's what I, you know, I'm passionate about that is in, in the environments that I create that we can help people, you know, feel a part of something and belonging. Mm. And, you know, that's part of their journey and trying to be their best, their best self. Mm. Um, so especially in New Zealand at the moment, you know, there's, wow. I see all the time, the amount of, um, 
attempted suicide that's happening. Oh yeah, and that's that's something that I like doing. You know, part of this community, mm. I work in the community is creating environments that help people feel apart, and you know, you can teach them a lot of great life lessons and life skills uh, to get through it. And the beauty about sports as well is you yeah. can actually, you know, there's a lot of parallels with life. Um, that you know, just working hard and sacrifice and whatnot, yeah. and you can help you know achieve. And if you you know if you lose a game or lose something that it's not the end of the world that you can um, you can learn from your mistakes or learn from the performance and um, find ways to get better for the next time. Mm. And that's you know that's like life, eh? you know. Mm. We things don't always go to plan, but you just learn to you learn from it, you adapt, and you, you move on. Mm. You keep moving. <laughs> you keep moving exactly. Yeah. It's like uh, creating that support system. I think that's a big big thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How do you, how do you, uh, what are some things you can do to create that, especially when you're feeling down? Cause when you're feeling um, down, it feels like there's no way through sometimes, right? Yeah, exactly. I think, um, forums help, eh? Hey? You know, I'm part of a church group and having a little connect group so you can connect with, eh? Hey, and just yarn away and yeah. you don't have to, you know, and your family's a big thing, a big part of it as well. Yeah. I'm um, just having different places, uh, different environments or different forums or platforms you can um, tap into just to, just to share and just to, yep. um, just to, I guess, share what's on your mind or even exercising as well. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's something that helps me a lot as well. I always feel good after exercising, so I try and get it done in the morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so, so that doesn't, doesn't Yeah, so I feel up. good for the rest of the day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think platform um, – yeah, forums, different forums, different different environments and groups that you can talk towards. So I like going to church and yeah. you know, I always feel feel good after hearing the word and spending time with you know, in the yeah. word as well. So it, it helps as well. Helps. That's a really good point. Yeah, like it, it's good to be connected or foster their connection, even when you're not mm. feeling down. And then you know, you always are creating that support system. And, yeah, and so those forums are good because I saw that uh, Pacific uh, Oceans Apart series. Yes, yes, um, that was awesome. My video is yeah, really good video, really good points there. Touching, touching, Yeah, I thought I thought they did a real good job, uh, and mm. they raised some really good, uh, authentic points in that. You know how, especially in the islands, you know a lot of the villages are the support mm. systems, and like a lot of players, yeah. a lot of sports people grow up in their villages where you, they don't speak out as much because. Um, yeah. people can sense it. You don't have to speak out as much in the village. The support system is there. Everyone's in mm-hmm. tune. So you yeah. always have that system. But then, you know, some, and then players, when they get to a certain level and they go overseas, all, all of a sudden, that's not that support system isn't there. Yeah. So no one's there to like catch your cues, you know, mm-hmm. in the, in the villages, uh, your relatives can tell it straight away yeah. if you're down. Uh, yeah. And so, it was uh, it was really illuminating to hear about that how how important it is for um, especially players from the islands to yeah. have that support system. Eh? Yeah, exactly. It made just watching that um, that little documentary mm. made so much sense. You know, <laughs> it's like that's actually so true. You know, we take things for granted sometimes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, just dealing with people and being around. You know. But then you take that, you take someone out of an environment and check them into something that's completely foreign to them. Yeah. How much that could actually affect them, eh? <laughs> yeah, 100%. It was good to see pl- people like Ben Artinga mm. taking, yeah. uh, taking a lead on that, eh? It's like, yeah. Important. Like you said, yeah. like once you speak out about it, mm. then, then it, you know, it creates this energy. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. You know, share it. Like, also, I think I find I'm helping a different outlet, you know, a different creative outlet for yourself, you know, whether it be, you know, um, you know, when I was playing, I was, you know, I was, um, I was, you know, doing my, my studies and chipping away at that because, you know, life rugby and rugby is going to finish <laughs> one day yeah. playing, whether we like it or not, we're going to finish playing one day. Yeah. Um, and it, what, what are you going to, what are you doing now that will help the, the transition from when you play to when you're not playing and trying to put the steps in place now, to make that tra- make that transition a lot more smoother. Absolutely, yeah. And you, you, I saw you're doing a lot of work around transition. You're putting a lot of content about like those challenges between transitioning. Yeah, exactly. 
And I think, um, especially now, you know, when mm. there's a lot of uncertainty in, in the air mm. about jobs and, you know, even see like rugby competitions finishing and not being able to play this year and salary cuts mm. and all this different stuff. Uh, you know, life's a lot bigger than sports. And it's like, Jason, you know, how can we create different uh, avenues for us to go down? Go down? Yeah. Yeah, and so awesome that you're creating things like Rugby on the Rocks. Uh, you know, you're creating their community and for people to tap into. Um, yeah, and with, with the Rugby on the Rocks as well, I've got like a, um, you know, I, I really want people to go out and share a lot of the information around the world, you know, you know, positive, positive, positively impacting the world. You know, it could be one person impacting their world or it could be one person impacting the millions or, or whatnot. And it's like I... You know, I could see I could see having a hundred thousand consultants all around the world teaching that stuff, yeah. and it's just helping people with rugby or helping people with life as well. Um, then I don't see why not to. Eh? Yeah, hundred um, percent. I love some of your content on there. I love uh, where you do the different rugby players. You know, <laughs> Sunny Bill, you had a Dan Bigger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how did that come? You just did one, and everyone loved it, and then you just did the next one. Yeah, I um, I um, oh, at work they asked me to do some videos for the um, for the kids. Yeah, and I was like, I gotta take myself seriously. So I was like, oh, and I'll put on all these other jerseys. I'm running out of few jerseys to use. So oh, yeah, I true. Try and think of some different ideas soon. As if uh, people are listening and have jerseys, send them to Rocky. <laughs> just before we got online today, I posted up on our social media pages and doing a TikTok challenge for our for our club. Oh yeah. <laughs> So I did my first TikTok video this morning. <laughs> oh, you just got on? Uh, yeah, yeah, I just got nice. on this morning and I did a TikTok video and posted it on our social media pages. Nice. Uh, I'm going to announce the winner next week. Uh, All right. Wants to jump on, uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. The, yeah, there'll be some stiff competition. At, uh, Rocky set a pretty good standard, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't want to keep you too long. Uh, I know we've been chatting for a while and I've loved it. It's been this. awesome. Yeah, it's been a great conversation, man. So much... Um, so much good stuff and this is what i love about the format you know you yeah. can chat and chat and uh you get into some really good stuff uh you know you've done so much uh uh with your career with studies uh transitioning into some new stuff um what are you most excited about in the next year well just seeing what we can actually do, you know, there's, we put so much limitations on what we can actually do and what we can actually achieve in life. Mm -hmm. And sort of just taking that, taking the barriers, or, or, you know, taking, taking the mental barriers off ourselves and thinking, shucks, that thing that I thought was a 10 might actually be a two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And push, pass through it in that two and then go into the, the next 10, which be something far, you know, out there that we never thought possible mm -hmm. and then reaching that 10 and thinking it's you know and then it end up being only a five <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it's like this rugby on the rocks you know it could be you know could be you know reaching someone in i don't know south korea or something <laughs> that, that's crazy yeah uh, yep. one one day after launching two days after launching that rugby on the rocks i was having a zoom meeting with someone in you know a group of rugby players in india <laughs> crazy. and even like even like um yeah just uh even with my work at Ponsonby Rugby you know it's just in that one 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 of my projects for that is how do I create a, a community you know how do I create a really thriving community that people want to be a part of and you know they're helping each other and yeah uh, helping each other grow and get better and you know everyone wants to feel a part of that so that's that's the stuff I like that's the stuff I like and all the championships and winning and all that kind of stuff that's that all flows on from that kind of stuff. Mm, mm. It's like, yeah, how, how can we make people feel a part of a community and belong and be their, be, their best self yeah. and, and hopefully impact, you know, from that experience, hopefully impact those around them. Yeah. I love that. I love that message of, uh, yeah, first of all, possibilities, you know, mm. just, uh, Going back to what we we're saying, you're getting things out of your head and into your hands. Uh, just do it. Just do those things. Mm -hmm. Keep moving. Uh, and so the possibilities. And secondly, I love that message of creating 
a wider community and whatever you're doing, you know, mm. that the community is so important. The secondary things are like the championships and the uh, yeah. accolades and those almost come as a result of creating their community anyway. Yeah, exactly. And being real genuine and pure about why you're doing it. Yeah, how do you can you can always see through. You can see through when it's not the right. Yeah, uh, you can see through it. Or you can you can feel it when it's not not quite genuine or pure, and it's yeah. not right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just just search and the search, you know, and make sure it's you know you're living out your truth in a way. Yeah, it won't be a hundred percent straight away. It might be. Yeah, exactly. It's a journey, right? Like you said. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, awesome, man. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I've got the last few questions. Rapid fire stuff. Uh, okay. Number one, what's your favorite food from Fiji? Favorite food? Oh, the roti curry when I always go there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's what kind of curry? Oh, uh, lamb. Lamb, lamb. Nice one. <laughs> Some good stuff in Auckland, eh? South Auckland. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Sandringham as well down the road. Yeah. It's just down the road for me. So I might. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Must see if there's anything anything open. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, number two. Um, would you recommend Kava to a friend? Yeah, I'll re- recommend it to them. Yeah, I'll recommend it to them, but I wouldn't drink it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm plastic. I, I can't. I can't handle it. But I'll have, I'll, I'll have a bowl here yeah. and there. Yeah. If you visit it, you know, it's, it's like if you go back yeah. to or something. Yeah, yeah. Nice one. Yeah. Okay, so final question to wrap up, Rocky. Uh, what's one thing you would tell a 10 year old kid from Fiji? Oh, well, um, the world is such a big and wonderful place, you know, that you can achieve anything that you want to achieve. Um, and being in, and the world nowadays is so awesome that we can seek and find any knowledge that we want on the internet. We can chuck it on Google or chuck it on YouTube and we can find the information that we want. So really dream big. Um, yeah, we can seek and, and find the information that we want and to surround ourselves with the, the you know, really good people, you know, they're, they're going to help us in our journey and help us, you know, when we fall and help us when we, you know, when we're up the top as well. Um, yeah, I guess that's, that's, that's it for me and really just prepare for the long, the long run, long term, um, 30, 40, 50 years from now. <laughs> Don't always think about the, the today eh? and the here and now, but, yeah. you know, you can live in the here and now and do that and then always think about, you know, the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> That's beautiful. Rocky, on that note, can I just say thank you so much for being on the podcast today. I've had a great time talking to you and nice. uh, listening to your story, man. I wish you we'll all the best. Soon. <laughs> for sure. We'll we'll catch up again. Yeah, for That's sure. Good. Have a have a Rodian curry next time as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> awesome, man. Take care. Thank you. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcast, Spotify, or wherever you may be listening to this podcast. Bula vinaka.